In my Halloween video, I talked about a case from Minneapolis, Minnesota, in which a woman who was delivering newspapers claimed she encountered some very strange teenagers who tried to attack her before turning down a side street and seemingly vanishing off the face of the earth. I have read of other cases involving teenagers who seem to be from some other time or place, and no, I'm not talking about black-eyed kids, but just normal-looking kids who behave very, very strangely. One such case I found happened in 1988 in El Paso, Texas. The witness, who was only 17 years old at the time, remembered that his family had just moved to another house across town. They had backed the U-Haul up to the garage, and his father and him were talking on the ramp when two or three kids walked up and asked if they were moving in. They confirmed that they were. One of the kids then asked the father if his son would be able to hang out with them for a while. The father agreed, and the witness went off with the kids. So I started walking around the neighborhood with them. Only one of them talked at all, which was a little weird. He asked if I wanted to check out a bomb shelter, which was in the backyard of an abandoned house. It was a place where they partied, he told me. The witness agreed, and they made their way to the property, which had no fencing. Strangely, there were five more kids waiting there by the shelter's open hatch. I started to go down the cement stairs. It didn't really strike me as a bomb shelter. The sides went straight down and had graffiti all over them. The stairs ended at a wall and you had to make a sharp left. When I made that turn, I stopped. There was about a four inch cement platform with a cement table on it. No place for chairs. In the far left corner was a doorway, but no door. I, of course, got the creeps and started backing up. As I went back up the stairs, several more people had gathered, but no one tried to stop me. They just stared at me. When I got to the top, the kid that had done all the talking said he would walk me home. They walked home together and that was the last time he saw him. He forgot about the incident for five years until one day, while talking on the telephone, it popped into his head. The weirdest thing I can remember is that I never saw any of those kids again. I can't tell you if they were male or female or what they look like. Whatever happened that day, I feel like I had a narrow escape and was definitely protected. Over the years, Franklin County in Georgia has seen its share of strange encounters, most notably of the ghostly and hairy bipedal kind. Granted, there was an incident in 2004 that really stands out as chilling, although it doesn't involve ghosts or Bigfoots. The incident happened between 1 and 2 a.m. in the fall of 2004. Two sheriff's deputies were dispatched to an abandoned house to check on reports of noises and weird sounds. They left the station at the same time and drove down Highway 106 and met with the complainant who had called them. He informed the officers that he had heard something moving around and making noises at the abandoned house across from his in the woods. Despite it being quite late and quite chilly for a fall evening, the neighbor assumed it was young people looking for a party spot or possibly a homeless person, and he was hoping the officers would be able to run them off. The officers could not see the home from the road. Given how tucked away it was and how late it was, the officers feared that somebody might actually be engaged in cooking meth or doing some other illegal drug activity, so they approached the property quickly and quietly, not wanting to spook whomever might be inside. After traversing the thickly wooded area, they eventually found a trail and followed it for about three to five minutes. It almost ran directly up to the old farmhouse where the noises were being heard. Coming in from the back, they made their way down the sides of the home towards the front door. They could hear something shuffling around inside and one of the officers who was point peeked around a window sill and came back and just stared at his partner strangely. The officer asked, what did you see? I don't know, he told him, a blank look on his face. The officer went back to the window. This time he stood directly in front of the window, something an officer is trained never to do and shown his light inside. A look of horror crossed his face. He then begged his partner to come and see this. The officer was reluctant, assuming that he was just trying to spook him, 
and that it was just a cat or some other critter of the woods. The fact that he was standing in front of the window confirmed that there was no real danger, but his partner, without blinking, demanded him to come over and take a look. Still thinking it was a joke or an animal, he smiled, walked over to the window, and looked inside. He stopped breathing. He looked at his partner, who was wide-eyed. When he looked into the room, he saw a being, or a person, who was about three to four feet tall, very thin, and was completely powder blue gray in color with long fingers. It was just standing in the middle of the room. There was a fair amount of hay lining the floor, so they couldn't see its feet. It was turned away from their flashlights, like a child who didn't want to look at the light. It was covering its head in a defensive manner. He asked his partner what the hell it was, and he said he didn't know, and told him he was leaving. As his partner stepped back, the main witness lowered his flashlight towards the creature's knees, and that's when it turned its head and looked at him. Shocked, he took a step back, but could still see it. It had large black eyes. Whatever it was, it wasn't human. Frightened at what he was seeing, he immediately turned and walked away, joining his partner. As they left the area, moving swiftly back down the path to the road, the main witness knew that it had walked to the window and was watching them. The main witness then started to turn back and look, but suddenly felt that he shouldn't do that, that something bad might happen if he did. They made their way back to the road. His partner was very disturbed. The man who had called the police asked them what they had seen and where they were going. The officers told him that they had gotten another call, that it was nothing, that he should go back inside and stay there. They drove away. When they got back to the station, the two frightened officers wrote a miscellaneous report on the incident. Albert Rosales, author of the Humanoid Journals, who works in law enforcement in Florida, spoke directly with the main witness about the incident. He added that he didn't remember seeing any clothing, and described the body as child-sized, with an adult-sized head and eyes that were twice as large as a human's. The officer noted that upon looking at the entity, he felt sorry for it and momentarily got the sense that he needed to help it, even though he was uncertain why. He further alluded to other strange incidents in that area that led up to the encounter, though he did not elaborate. 